Hi guys, hello, good evening, it's going to be evening when I'm posting this, good evening and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, thank you so much, thank you so much for stopping by, I hope you enjoy my content and if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much too, I really appreciate everything. I know it's been a while you guys have seen my face, if you were wondering why I had to hold with my vlogmas content, then the title is why. Guys, I relocated. <laughs> like, I am so excited. I am so happy. Original. Original Batman. So far, the beat. If you've been viewing my channel previously, you know that I was based in Lagos, Nigeria. But right now, right now, a baby girl is based in Manchester, England. Like, I am like the most excited person. It took all the strength in me to just hold back and be like, okay, I'm gonna tell you guys when I'm here. I'm gonna tell you guys when I'm here because I could only tell like my family members and very, very, very few people. I am now in Manchester in the UK. So from now, please call me Molola of what? Manchester or Molola of the UK. <laughs> yes guys i'm like as you can tell i am so excited like my happiness is so contagious i've been looking forward to this since forever honestly since forever and i'm happy that i my dreams have actually come true in this video i'm going to be telling you how i relocated to the uk relocating as a couple because i came here with my husband yeah all the plans everything that went into it and give you like timelines of when i started till now so you want to stay tuned right and please hit that subscribe button hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up so make sure to stay tuned and you are welcome before we got married we always knew that we were going to another country relocate basically because we were not so happy with the way things were going in nigeria and we wanted something better for ourselves so what we did was we um did our research and we're like it was it was very very difficult for us to actually come to a consensus and decide to relocate because we were pretty comfortable back in Nigeria. It was a very difficult decision, honestly, for us to uproot our lives and say, okay, you know what, we're gonna go, we're going to go and plant it somewhere else. But it's a decision that we knew we had to take in the long run because of our um, goals and what we wanted to achieve together as a couple. After we had decided that we were going to relocate, then came the um, task of finding out which country we wanted to relocate to what route we wanted to go through and all that so our first um choice was canada and that's like very obvious because like they have like an easier pr route and all that from the feedback we're getting from our friends we were seeing that it took like two years um sometimes 12 months before they could get like a visa and get to move and personally um i wasn't willing to wait that long i was tired but my husband was like okay let's give it a try and then we also found out about the uk too so we had both agreed that if we were not going to go through Canada PR route, we would probably try out the UK study route. And so right now I am a student of the University of Salford in Manchester, England, and I will also share with you how I got admission and all that. Basically, um, this is going to be a shout out to my husband. He was like really good with all the planning process. I personally am a terrible planner. I'm just trying to get better, but he helped like with the whole planning process creating a budget timelines keeping up with like tasks and all that and we really worked in sync so shout out to you baby well done and thank you for getting us to this point the whole stress of applying looking for schools to apply it just made sense to just use an agent and i had a friend who just left like a couple of months back so i reached out to her and she shared the phone number of uh agent escape consults which was the guy i ended up using so i'll drop his um details in the description box below and you can also reach out to him he's like very helpful and very very good with it on the 21st of june 2022 was when i reached out to the agent escape and then that was the same day we booked our tv appointment so everything started moving i also booked our tv appointment for august 4th 2022 so he gave us the advice. I know that a lot of people do like get the cast before going for TB tests, but we decided to go like, let's do the TB tests on 4th of August. And 
that test, it was strenuous. Like we spent 12 hours there. During the planning process, I was more particular about going to London. I wasn't willing to live anywhere outside London, but man, I saw the living expenses in London and I ran. You know, did. I'm very glad we ended up choosing Manchester and not going with London. So the first school I applied to was um, Glasgow Caledonian University, the London campus. The application was done on 12th of July. So by then I'd gotten all the documents ready. I think they asked for passport data pay, school certificate. So I didn't have my certificate at that point in time, but I had like another document which I used for my NYSC. And that was what I applied with. My CV, a professional reference, my YX certificate. So like those were the major documents I needed to provide for me to apply, and which the agent did for me, thankfully. So I was able to um, provide all of those documents and we applied. Bear in mind that GCU London did not respond to me until 21st of October 2022. It was weird and I was annoyed because fam, I sent like follow-up emails and all that and there was no response so by the time they responded they told me they were already um, no longer taking applications but by then i had gotten another admission because i was planning to go for a january intake the schools i considered applying to at that point were greenwich university aston university in birmingham but i did not go with that because it was too expensive we had a budget like i said so it was way over the budget Ulster university but i checked like reviews so one of the things i did during this whole process was like when i check a school check like reviews google and other websites and the reviews i saw for also weren't that great so i just said you know and uh, i'm not doing also university i'm definitely going to find a school that would suit me and i would love so i kept on searching portsmouth university so i applied to portsmouth um 20th of august and they actually did give me an admission but i had declined at that point in time bruno university but they said i was going to have to write ielts yes sk consult suggested that oh it's better if i um just apply with a school that because i had like good grades in you from uni and i also have my work certificate so that should be sufficient which at the end of the day was because i didn't have to write ielts anymore now i'm going to go into like my school that i applied to and got admission for i applied on the 1st of september and i got my admission by the 6th of september it was a conditional offer, but it was an admission still. A win is a win. The conditions I had to fulfill for me to be able to get my unconditional offer were to upload my BSc certificate, like I mentioned. I didn't have that before, so I had to go and get it from Unilag. The second condition was pay a deposit, a deposit or £5,500. So my school fees is actually fifteen thousand three hundred pounds and i needed to pay five thousand five hundred pounds as a deposit so those two conditions needed to be met one of the reasons why like i really really like soul food is the fact that they make things very easy and they communicate so well so you can use flywire to make payments so even on flywire you can just pay in naira it's going to be at the black market rate but you're going to pay in naira which was great but um it was concerning because you could i could check it like maybe today and it says 4.9 million naira that's what the equivalent of £5,500 was then. And then the next day, it has jumped to £5.2 million. And you're like, what? While checking the school's website and checking like all the deadlines I had to meet, I saw that deadline for the upload of your documents for CAS. So CAS is confirmation of acceptance for studies. That's what you're going to use to apply for your visa, right? So the deadline for CAS was 9th of October. And for so forth, you need to upload all the documents you have for your visa for you to get your visa you also have to upload it which like is really good i think that's one of the reasons why the home office rates them as like a university with high compliance rates when you're filling in your visa details the deadline was 9th of october which is like a month and two days away and that was very worrisome because you need to show your bank statements which states that you have your proof of funds for nine months so your proof of funds basically is the school fees balance as well as your living expenses. The proof of funds for the both of us was £9,207 each, and that's £1,023 for nine months. In Naira, you used like the Wanda converter rate to convert that. That was about 13.13 13 million Naira, basically. 9th of October, that was when like the proof of fund we needed to upload for the CAS, but the proof of fund needed to have matured before that date. 
and maturity is basically 28 days so i made my deposit using form a which was like really good so i got the global gold excellence scholarship award which gave me 3500 off my school fees i was so happy do you know what 3500 pounds is like that's a whole lot of money that was saved um, and I'm so happy because um, I got that and then my school fees became 11,800. I had already initiated my form A payment, it had gone through, the school had already confirmed and then I got my unconditional offer. Like I was super excited. You know what it means? I was gonna go to Salford, yay. <laughs> So by that time, things started looking really good. We were already making plans. We were like, God, please let this, you know, go through and let everything be smooth for us. Now, pro tip for you, if you're planning to like relocate to the UK, plan early. Like, do everything you need to do very, very quickly. Don't say, oh, you want to do this. You do this at so-so time and then we'll do as much as you can. Even before you like start applying to schools, know every single step of the um process so that when one thing is not coming forth you're able to do something else and watch a lot of youtube videos on the 7th of october i uploaded my documents for my CAS, and then they informed me that they would get back to me i think on the 13th of october so i was just like you know waiting that something good was going to come but then the email saying that oh they had like a lot of requests this period a lot of intakes and then they're going to delay by a few more days and guys on the 19th of october cast came out like you know i had been waiting for the cast for like weeks i had been praying i had been god please let this thing just click through let it go through like i would be so happy and luckily for us on the 19th it came out i remember i was out on the day i called my husband and i was just like almost screaming on the road like babe cast it out check the mail and like i got the mail and i'm like so happy and guys guess what you know i said plan and i'm very happy for my husband because he was the one that did, did all the planning that and 19th of october if i tell you how many things we did i'll get into that right now because daylight is gone this is a very very shocking culture that same day that we got our cast, we also booked our flight ticket and then paid for our visa over the next couple of days. So um, we booked Qatar Airways. Like I said before that you should research. So I already like spoke with a couple of friends of mine who relocated to the UK during that period and also to the US. And quite a number of people informed me that uh, Qatar gave them like an extra luggage allowance, 23 kg because they were students. So obviously I was going to go with Qatar because like I have a lot of load. Paying for the visa on um, the gov.uk website was pretty seamless. It was straightforward and all. But you see, once we enter TLS contacts, hmm. once we enter TLS contacts, so we were going to go with um, v the VI center because we had heard stories that that one was much better compared to the Kedja center. So we chose the VI center and... Hmm, we had to pay like extra 55 pounds which was where we now got stuck because all the dollar cards we had were not working so apparently you had to pay with a pound card so at this point in time i had to reach out to escape and thankfully he helped us out so we used his pound card to pay for the um tls vi payment that was 55 pounds each because i wanted to do that so that same night like i said we booked our tickets on qatar we um that was when plans started taking place and then when we actually applied for our visa we couldn't get the same date so we went which was like date a week to each other i went for my biometric capturing on the 25th of october um and my appointment was for nine i would insert a clip here to let you know how it went hey guys so um this video is still short while i am still in nigeria um today is 20 5th October 2022 and I have my visa appointment today. I'm like I'm a bit worried. I'm a little bit scared. Um but I know that God is going to be with me all the way. My appointment is for 9 a.m. This is 6 15. And to bust your brain guys, my husband said we're leaving home by 6 30 and I am ready before 6 30. I'm back from the visa appointment. I'm home now. 
It was very simple. I left home. I got there around 9, no, around 8.15. 8:15. I hung around and then I went in by 9 o'clock actually. Long story. But basically, I'm back home. It's 11. I finished around 10 o'clock. It was pretty straightforward. Do this, do this, take uh, my biometrics and I was done. They didn't ask any questions, thankfully. So fingers crossed for the next 15 working days and I pray with all my heart that I get this. Guys, so in five days, my visa was ready. And that's why I said plan early. So I think because we were not um, going during peak period, we paid for standard visa, not priority visa. And we got our visa ready in five days. Before now, when you apply for your visa, you get a letter that comes with like your passport. But fortunately for us, that letter was sent even before we went to pick up our passport, even before TLS contacted us to come and pick up. And we already saw that like my application was successful. That was like one of the happiest days of our lives. Like we were like, oh my God, this is actually coming true. I was supposed to go for my pickup on um, 2nd of November, which coincidentally was my husband's capturing date. And guys, his own visa too was ready in five days. So we paid for standard, but then it was like five days, guys. Hey guys, so today is 11th of November and we're going to pick up my husband's passport. We pick up mine last week when he was capturing and we're going to pick up his own today. Although we already got the mail that it was successful, so we're just going to go and pick it up. And it's official now. Fans need to get employed. We are going to the UK. So I'm going to become all of UK, all of Manchester very soon. You know? So I think I need to mention that. It is officially 45 days to go. Hey, 45 days to go and I'm super excited. Passports picked up, tickets booked, uh, luggage, about to start parking, parking, but you know, we moved. So please plan early. So we got our visas like early November and we school was still reserved in January. So you can imagine most people start like rushing to get their cars or get like all the documents towards um the end of the period but we didn't have to do that so it was it was pretty seamless immediately after our visa came out we initiated a second form a payment for the school fees because we're like you know what we don't want to get here and start um stressing on oh, how we're going to pay the balance or start using pounds to pay since we could have like paid in naira and all that and thankfully a month and one week later my school fees payment went through so yeah that's like the basic thing the other things i think i want to mention are um coming over here like i said we use qatar i had three bags my husband had two bags we had like a lot of friends who already told us like the most important things you need to pack are your documents food wigs um medicine for me i was particular about my gadgets what we did was we used two bags for food, two Ghana must go bags for food. And please don't judge me. I'm not coming here to eat, but I do like my African food <laughs> a whole lot. So two bags for food, one bag for clothes. That's me and my husband's clothes. We didn't really bring a lot of clothes. One bag for filming equipment and um, I think one bag for wigs and skincare. And so, yeah, we just like distributed everything like that. And guys, another pro tip, pay for extra luggage online if you can trust me it helps i didn't even bother saying oh i'm going to do 23 kg only i just you know a couple of days to when we're supposed to travel just did like babe we can't do 23 kg anymore one bag was already 30 another one was 29 and like everything inside had to go so we just you know upgraded two of the bags to 32 kg each and i think it cost us about 47,000 and eight naira which is right like way cheaper compared to like i heard people say they paid like maybe 70k at the airport for extra luggage it's freaking expensive at the, at the airport so just save yourself a lot of stress pay for extra luggage before you travel before the date of your travel basically with respect to the food that i packed i'll try and like list them out on the screen so you like see but like special mention goes to my ogiri like the way i packed that thing guy a special shout out to my mom too my mom was the one who helped us like with all the food drying them making sure like they were um properly 
dried and packed so thank you mom um we got like two bags of food we went with one bag of the food actually was mainly for swallows so we had fufu fufu flour pap um gari ilubo that's i think a samala flour um yeah and pounder so like that one alone was like 23 kg already don't judge me i'm not coming here to eat and then wigs so um a friend of mine fellow me thank you so much fellow me she already told me that you know you know what come with your wigs and i have seen like a lot of videos of people say oh come with your wigs and attachments because they're bloody expensive here and they are because i found out yesterday that to make cornrows cornrows that even if i want to make cornrows in lekki that is expensive it's 2k it's friggin 20 pounds 20 pounds is almost 20k what for cornrows in case you see me showing you guys how to make cornrows on your head don't be shocked because i'm gonna learn it one way or the other and guys it's so dark now it's so dark and it's just you know it's not even four o'clock yet it gets so dark easy so for the wigs i got like i increased the number of wigs i have and please don't judge me but i went from two weeks to 13 weeks yeah 13 so i came here with 13 weeks <laughs> My nose like my braids. This braid is gonna be in my hair till like February. I got wigs from Mabella Hair, Bell Store. Most of my wigs are from Guinea Car, but I haven't even. But you know how I was saving them. I bought them during most of them during sales in November, and I have kept them. Like I buy them, put them in the wig bag, and then just keep them in the box. I ain't touching all of them. But girls, I am proud of the number of wigs I have now. So now. I've got to be flexing around the UK. Anywho, guys, I'm so excited. This is the um, part one of my video. I do hope, like, you've enjoyed this so far. I am going to, you know, post, like, the day of the travel and, like, me packing in subsequent videos. So this video, this reduction video, basically, is probably going to be three parts. Yeah, three parts or two. Let's see how it goes. I will let you guys know in the description box. So, um, yeah. Thank you so much, guys. If you have any questions or any things you'd like me to address or anything you want to ask me, really, just make sure to drop it as a comment and I'll definitely do my best to respond to everyone. Okay? The next video is going to be a vlog showing you the travel and all of that. And I hope you enjoyed. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Please, guys, please, please, please. Thank you. Bye.